just wanted to um, just want to let you know that October next month is our Archives History Month, and so our next third Thursday program will take place on Thursday, October twenty first, and we'll have Project Archivist Sarah Morin from the Connecticut State Library, and she will discuss uh, New Haven Records, the New Haven Records Project. Uh, so please mark your calendar for our next third Thursday. Today we're excited because we have four special guests or several fresh special guests with us today. Um, we have Marcia Furman and we have Gwen Gethel and we have Christina DeMove and Isabel Duvall. And they will talk about their experiences working as interns here at the Connecticut State Library. So before they get into a little bit about what they did here at the State Library, I'm um, just ask that you give them a warm welcome. Um, welcome to the program and so forth. And so um, we'll give them a platform just to share a little bit about what they did here at the State Library, uh, working in, um, in the capacity as an intern here. Uh, so we'll start with Marcia. Marcia, could you share a little bit about your experience working at the oh. State Library? Uh, sure, I um, processed a large photograph collection from the Connecticut Forest and Parks Association. And that was back in um, 2015 for the summer, I did that. Uh-oh, my computer's going weird. Oh, she's bringing it up. And, and um, I, were, I live in Torrington, Connecticut and uh, I, I presently work part-time at the Litchfield Historical Society. And so I went to Simmons, uh, well, Simmons College, it's university now. Um, that, that's where I got my degree in library science with a focus in archives. Anything okay. else you need to know? Uh, no, that's wonderful, wonderful. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Gwen, could you share with us a little bit about your experiences working at the State Library as an intern? Sure, um, my name is Gwen Guthiel and I'm a junior studying English and Human Rights at Trinity College. Um, and I was working on two projects over the summer. So the first one is the one that you see. I created a story map um, tracking women in the Loomis, starting with uh, this black woman named Augusta Loomis and tracking her descendants around Connecticut, focusing on kind of piecing together black stories like the title says, um, because so many records weren't taken very carefully because of its socialized racism. Um, and then the second project I worked on was creating a research guide and um, on the mental health hygiene movement in Connecticut. And I also, for that, I created a, basically, a, I'm blanking on what it's called. It wasn't a story map, um, but I basically created a PowerPoint. <laughs> what subject guide yes and oh yeah and also a timeline thanks Isabel <laughs> um for that project and I enjoyed both of them a lot and I learned a lot from all of the librarians I worked with excellent excellent okay um is uh Christina with us I don't think she's here yet but um I'll, I'll move on to Beth uh Beth share some of your experiences that you've had here um, working at the State Library as an intern, if you can. Hello, Beth, are you there? Oh, the, the fun of Zoom, sorry. <laughs> That's <to> okay. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I should know by now. <laughs> um, so my name is Beth Dyer. Um, I'm uh, from South Windsor. Um, I am a student at um, Southern Connecticut State University. Um, I'm in the MLIS program. Um, started out as um, just looking to get my certification as a library media specialist, um, um, but uh, really uh, loving, um, especially archiving through this program kind of um, really fell in love with the process. Um, and um, I am a pre-K-8 librarian here at a, a school in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, I worked this summer on a Zooniverse project, a digital humanities project to um, kind of seal the metadata out of um, 
the fantastic letters, diaries, postcards, um, and and photographs, objects um, of soldiers that fought in World War I. Um, so all our librarians <laughs> and it kind of collected these um, fantastic documents um, and um, brought them all um, and uh, the librarians from the uh, Connecticut State Library scanned them um, and um, have had them in the collection um, in the digital, the Connecticut State Library's digital archive collection. Um, but now we are doing this project to, uh, or I'm, I'm helping out on this project um, to pull that metadata out so it is more searchable. Um, and we have kind of a, a broader picture of um, the soldier's experiences. So. It, this is the field guide um, that you see on the screen right now that I did most of my work on. Um, of, it's kind of a, a guide for volunteer um, volunteers on Zooniverse's website to um, classify the documents and also to transcribe them. So, okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, Christy, not Christine. I'm sorry. I don't think she's here yet. Um, uh, Isabel. Isabel. Hello, everyone. I'm Isabel. I'm an undergraduate junior at Trinity College. Um, and over the summer, I worked on two projects. And this is the first one you see. Uh, I did a story map on William Grimes, um, just tracking down his locations and just like his presence in Connecticut. Um, and it was really cool because he's like the first person to ever write his own slave narrative. So I was really happy to like just be a part of that um, research on him and stuff like that. Um, a lot of my work had to do with just reading um, his narrative and then just trying to like pinpoint uh, his locations in whatever uh, he said. And um, yeah, my second project uh, I worked on with Christina, who's not here yet. Um, and that was a, a subject guide, just like uh, Gwen's, <clears throat> on the Manfield Training School in Connecticut. Um, and it was just a subject guide, um, just researching and getting everything together about, everything about Mansfield together. So. Okay. Okay, you guys have done, have done a tremendous work and um, I commend you all for the work that you all have, have done and, and the contributions that you've made to the Connecticut State Library, not only to the State Library, but to the field um, altogether. Um, so now I'm just gonna ask you guys uh, some questions and, and, and feel free to be relaxed and to share uh, some of your experiences and, and some of the things that you've um, encountered during your journey uh, at the State Library. Um, the first question I want to ask, and feel free to chime in with each other, um, what impact did your internship have on your academic or career goals? I mean, we can start. Uh, Isabel, you can share with us. And I, I'll call your names out so it'll make it easier. <laughs> uh, so honestly, for me, um, when it comes to like my academic and just future career goals, I was very like one track minded. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm an English major. Uh, and I do a lot of work with children, so I did want to um, become an English teacher. Uh, but after just like this whole summer of just researching and not really like working with children, I was like, oh, maybe I could actually do something in like the researching field. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, awesome. How about you, Beth? Um, I, um, so like I said, I'm a library media specialist. Um, so I have uh, middle school students that I teach every year um, how to use research with Connecticut. And I never, I mean, we talked about primary sources um, with the students, um, but I um, actually never used, embarrassingly enough, um, we had never used any of the digital archives that Connecticut State Library has. So 
um, I think I have a better understanding of how those databases work and how um, to integrate uh, digital archives into my lessons. But also, um, I really just, on top of just being super interested in these letters and diaries and learning about the experiences of um, these World War I soldiers, um, I, I think it changed who I, my perspective on how to teach as a librarian, um, how to, um, but also it um, kind of opened this new world of um, digital archives and um, the amazing things that are being done, um, like the story maps that I'm seeing now, and, um, and also using Zerniverse as a, as a way to, you know, to teach my students how to be citizen archivists and how to, um, and also for myself to maybe think of that as a, a, a future goal um, for, for uh, work, yeah, as a, as a career. Your experience has helped you all, all the way around. Yes, okay. in my career and also looking towards um, something that I'd be super interested in doing, so. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. Great, great, thank you, thank you. Uh, Gwen, how about you? Um, similar to what Isabel said, it also gave me all doing all of the research and the projects kind of broadened my idea of possibilities for jobs in the future. Just because I didn't really I knew I liked learning and research, but I didn't know I was going to enjoy it as much as I did um, this summer and actually learning all these new different types of um, tech and research like pathways got me helped get me a job as a student assistant. Um, oh, wow. awesome. person in the library, which was great. So definitely wouldn't have gotten that um, without this internship. Wow. And so it, yeah, it helped for the future and also just currently. And I think it was just, it was really interesting. I didn't, I didn't know so much about the library. Like I, I know what a library is, but I didn't know so much about the in-depth research. And so that really, that was really exciting. And I want to continue learning about that. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great. Mar Marcia? Hi, uh, Marcia. And Marcia, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I think for me, uh, well, first thing was finish school. I came pretty close to just like um, dropping out because I wasn't like a real library person, but I liked archives, but it kind of went with the degree. And actually until I did that, um, my internship working with the photographs, I, I wasn't really sure. Um, I have a BFA in photography. So, you know, photograph is really important for me. Um, and when I saw how much there was, and even though a lot of people are speaking about things being digital, I think first it's important to know what's in your collection because otherwise nobody's gonna even find it, know what's there or what is there. And so e even though I do like to digitize things that um, this, this would feel good because there was, I learned a lot about the organization, the Connecticut State Forest and Parks Association, never knew they were all volunteer, never knew they did the blue trails in Connecticut, which we have a vast amount. Um, and actually I ended up volunteering for them after because I was like so mesmerized by the work they do. But um, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, but yeah, it, it, it impacted me that I, I did want to finish school and knowing that there's a lot of this material hidden in the archives of a lot of places, um, they might have mentioned, yeah, we have some of the, you know, this collection, but you don't know the specifics of it. Uh, there was a lot of other papers that was processed by somebody else that came with the collection. Um, but I got, I like to do hands-on and, you know, um, somebody else mentioned, a couple mentioned the research and I learned how useful, you know, you know, looking up things on the internet and it was more eye-opening because it was really helping me with you know, my finding aids, um, especially with the spelling, the locations, um, what is this picture of? Um, and then you might see something where it's changed in the future. Um, and so it's, yeah, it, it did make an impact that I, I, I do, I, I like that hands-on and 
the photograph it was it was just wonderful and getting again um it, it just helped me to keep moving forward great thank you. yeah yeah thank you thank you uh christina um i i, I have actually two parts of the question to ask you. If you could share with us a little bit about your experience working um, as an intern at the Connecticut State Library and also, also the impact that it had on your academic career or goals with us. And Christina, if you can introduce yourself and tell yes. a little bit about your background. Oh, okay, got you. So, uh, hi, I'm Christina. I'm from Redwood, New York, which is on Long Island. Um, my class, I'm a junior, um, and then my majors, I'm a double major in psych and anthropology. Um, so yeah, I think that's, yeah, for my intro. And then a little bit about my experience. I was part of the program that Gwen and Isabel were, which is PhD, which was on campus, on our campus here. And I guess regarding about the library, I, before entering into this, and I guess this will go more into my academic goals and careers, before entering this research, I wasn't really always big on um, learning the historical preference on, or the historical, his, like anything historically related to any topic. Like I wasn't really a history person. I was more interested in learning about contemporary times and how it affects us now and all this. So going into this research, I needed to keep, well, I realized that I needed to keep a more open mind about how I approach certain topics. So I think my biggest thing while I was doing this research was keeping that open mind and understanding that this was a really, really big learning process for me. I'm not a history person. Um, it's not something that I could easily read through and it's not something that I was always interested in. But I think after this internship process, it really, really sparked an interest in me to consider our historical prevalence and our past and per se. But um, regarding the process, I really loved it. I loved doing the internship, even though sometimes I found it frustrating and difficult um, to look at stuff in the library, to look at archives and to look at all that. Um, it was all a learning experience. Um, and I think now when it relates to my academic goals and careers, I do want to enter into something psychology related. So either that be direct practice or doing macro, I'm at macro level work. So doing policy and legislation, but I will always have that open mind of doing research wherever I enter into my career, whether that be, I become a therapist, I become a social worker, I become a crisis intervention, whatever I enter into, I do plan to do research, um, whether that be in the library or whatnot, um, because this internship really made me realize that it's super important and it plays a big role into our contemporary time. So, yeah. Awesome. So you, you learned the value of research, it sounds like. Awesome. Great, great, great. Um, my next question is, what was the most surprising or coolest thing you learned about the State Library or our collections while working with us? And um, I'll go back in the same order. I'll start with um, Isabel, if you could share with us. Um, so I really love libraries. Like, I like exploring them. I like looking through them. Um, and it was really sad during COVID when everything shut down because when I got back home, I couldn't go to my favorite library. Um, but what I really liked about the State Library here in Connecticut was, I guess like seeing like the physical place where all the archives are held, it's very different from like viewing it on like your computer and digitally um, because everything's on one screen. So it doesn't seem like that expansive, but like, so just like step in and just see everything laid out, everything so organized. And it goes back to like when, um, um, when the colonies were first founded here in America, it's just like, wow, <laughs> I really like that. Great, great. Um, Beth, how about you? Oh, you're, you're muted. Sorry, okay. <laughs> I'm muting because um, there are some, really loud middle schoolers in the hallway oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but um but they they passed now um so like I said um the thing that I am uh, that I was kind of surprised about like I uh, said was the the archives you know I I teach research at Connecticut I teach the kids how to access it and what it is um but I 
I guess I, I had somehow had never realized how much, like Isabel said, the expansiveness of how many, um, how, how much fantastic resources there are, um, even on just the website. Um, but also the other thing that I uh, was surprised to find and so happily was um, the amount of really great programs um, that the Connecticut State Library um, uh, holds all the time, especially on, um, on social media. Um, Christine um, Pitsley, who I'm working with, <laughs> um, I uh, for our project, Remembering World War I, and I'm sorry if I didn't say that before, but um, uh, she, there is a Facebook page um, that, and there's social media pages um, on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, and there are, have been so many fantastic programs and um, articles and uh, just a, a big expanse of looking at all the different topics um, that have to do with Connecticut, whether it's, it's historical or um, looking at how the history affects today. Um, but I just was really excited to see, especially I have to say the, the World War I um, collection is just amazing. It's a topic that doesn't get really um, looked at very deeply. And it's just amazing to read the letters and the diaries um, and see what these young men and women, of course, um, were, were experiencing and both um, in Europe and in training and uh, just to kind of see, get a picture of that, what the world was like at that time. It was really, really exciting. So, Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome thing to be able to be a part of, to be able to see and have that hands-on experience with that type of history. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Gwen? I'm s sorry, I'm going to be redundant. Um, what Isabel and Beth have said, but I also just was really impressed and excited about the archives and the amount of resources that the library had. And I was actually off campus when I was doing the project. So I was using a lot of online resources, but even that, like I had no idea. My dealings with libraries have been like researching, looking for a book, taking it out, reading it, and then putting it back. Um, and it hadn't been so in depth research and things like that before. So yeah with the issue of being redundant, it's, it was great. Awesome, great, great. Marcia? Oh, hi. Um, I found it very eye-opening, you know, the vast amount of material that, that was in there and, you know, how it's all processed. And what was also interesting to me was when other people came in to do uh, whatever work they were doing, you got to interact with oh you know what project are you doing or what what is this project involved so it's not just about walking in there and doing your work you got to see what else is going on and you look you know I learned a, a, a lot just about oh that that they do that here or all oh, that you know things that I never thought of you know it was, so it was, it was very eye-opening in in that whole perspective of what goes on in archives um, yeah, and the, you know, j just th there's so much to do and so much more to do. And what I found kind of interesting as well was that I would walk through and, and see all these huge ledgers and, you, you know, studying history for me in school was just very boring and especially mm -hmm. government stuff, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it was just very boring. But when you see the books, you see the handwriting, you see the names, and then it, it kind of got like personal. Well, I remember that guy, or I remember that this is, oh, this is about stuff he did, oh my, you know, and it's right in front of you. Um, you know, the signatures, the writings, the, the, the material. And I remember my uh, parents talking about so-and-so and good or bad, it doesn't matter, but you begin to process that and it kind of, puts things in, in perspective and, and, and especially a time perspective, because that's one thing I always had a hard time learning in school is like dates, because I could not relate to any of this, these things that, you know, in history. And, you know, it's more of a memorization of 
I got to rememberize this date, but when you see the archival material, it, it just puts a different twist on things that like, yeah, this is real and, and here's, here it is. And, and, uh, and there's other things in there besides government thing, you know, um, projects that, you know, I, I was surprised about, I can't really think about Pam, but, um, you know, a lot, lot of, a lot of, um, paintings and, and other imaging, um, you know, some things were framed or unframed, um, statues and, uh, just, yeah, just a lot of different stuff. So it is, I, I think the variety for me was, um, interesting over overwhelming sometimes, but I had never really been in a archives like that. Um, a historical society, a small one where you have like one little room of shelving. And so to see, for me to see this in the history of Connecticut, it's like, it was, yeah, very eye opening. Awesome. Uh, how about you, Christina? <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse my dog. She's. <laughs> <Okay. Maybe. laughs> Um, I guess for me, I'll just, it's pretty similar. I was really interested, especially going into like being someone that wasn't always frequently at the library and wasn't really interested in um, anything historically related. Coming into that space was very different and um, it brought a new perspective. I think I also was very impressed, uh, not only with the amount of materials that was at the library, so the stuff that you could see physically when you were there and open up, uh, but also how much has been digitalized um, throughout our time. I mean, it kind of feels like the digital world came so recent, but we have so much info that's put out um, that people could see and all that. So family search, when I was using that to do my, um, I'm research for Professor Jim, which was what I focused on. Um, it was super interesting to see um, how much information you could find, but it also goes into other difficulties as well when we're talking about that, but there has been a lot of info that's been digitalized and looking at microfilm, um, stuff like that. So kind of translating our historical records to our digital era was also kind of cool to watch as well. There we go. Okay, awesome, great, great. Uh, my next question, what advice would you give future interns what about students thinking about an internship at the library what advice would you get and we'll go in the same order uh i would say that it's okay to ask for help um one of my biggest issues when i was working over the summer with the library is that like i was kind of scared to ask for help because um i felt like they were expecting me to um just kind of know how to research and stuff like that um but then like, I just had to realize like when you're a part of a job, like it's supposed to be a learning experience as well. Um, and I just had to like get over that. So yeah, it's okay to ask questions. People are here to help. <laughs> Great, awesome. Beth? Um, so what I would, I, I second Isabel's um, <laughs> statement, um, absolutely. And also I would say just um, check out everything that Connecticut State Library has to offer on their websites and their social media um, sites as well, because I think having a broader understanding of all that Connecticut State Library does is gonna be really helpful. For me, um, as an intern, um, researching, kind of getting an understanding of, um, so uh, I, the, I worked on a project on Zooniverse, and so kind of um, Christine gave really good advice at the beginning of my internship to just kind of look around Zooniverse, you know, play with some of the, you know, maybe uh, work in some of the other projects and get a better understanding. So I think um, just doing a lot of reading, a lot of uh, kind of just a, learn a little bit more about what you are um, gonna be working on and just kind of get in there and get your hands dirty a little bit, so. Great, great. Uh, how about you, Gwen? Um, I would say definitely do the internship, first of all, and also um, don't be discouraged by, for, from doing it because you are looking at what is expected of you and you don't know how to use certain technology or you're not sure exactly how to do this type of research. 
because the librarians will be more than willing to help you and are very good at helping. Um, and also then you'll learn, if you don't know how to do it by the end of the summer, you will. So you're just um, getting new skills and that's what, that's the best part of internships. Um, so definitely don't be scared if you don't know exactly what's going on in the beginning. Great, great. And Marcia? You're, you're muted, I'm sorry. You're, you're muted. Um, okay. There you go. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, I, I, like somebody said, definitely do the intern, internship. Um, I think it might be natural to be overwhelmed at first in the beginning. Um, you know, fortunately I was able to pick a project that I, you know, the photograph collection that I, I really knew I would enjoy. Um, there was just so much of it in the beginning. I was like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? And, you know, just boxes of mixed things. And you just have to dive into it and do it. Just, um, and then about halfway through, I said, there's, there's no way, no way I'm going to finish this. No way. But I, I almost did. I, I, I think I did everything but the slides, but then I actually went back the following summer to finish up that last bit. So I, you know, kept that connection going, but it's, you know, I think you've heard it before. Things are going to take like two or three times as long as, you know, you expect. And it's true, <laughs> but, you know, I think that need to, you know, get things done and to hurry up. And, and when you're new, it, it's, it's, I don't know, for me, it, it brings up a lot of anxiety, but, um, you know, fortunately I had a lot of room to spread out and my own little area and definitely ask questions um, because different places do have like different material, different housing material or different way they want to shelve things um, or, the, or the room or the type of boxes. So, you know, definitely asking questions and um, I think I used to make a list of questions or something and to try to get them all at once. But, uh, you know, I, everybody was was very helpful, very, um, you know, kept, kept me at, you know, on an even keel, you know, to, to just keep doing what I was doing. And, and I was on the, you know, right back of what was going on, which, you know, also boosted my, my confidence as, as I finally saw things starting to come together. I think gaining that confidence and you're doing something worthwhile and and that yeah you can say you, you you know oh i did that you know and it's it's i think good moving forward because then when you go for your jobs um, interviews and such you have that you know i i did this large collection or i i wrote all this up and um i work with computers so you you have all that background um which which is is good mm. Okay, awesome, great. How about you, Christina? What was some of your favorite uh, part or your favorite part of the internship? Um, oh, I'm sorry, my advice? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, it's okay. Uh, so my advice would be, um, it's okay to be frustrated. Um, that was something that I needed to take in uh, myself and to not also blame that frustration or pin it on yourself as if you're doing a bad job. I think that when I was doing the, like almost all three of the, um, the projects that I did during our PhD collaborative portion, um, I found myself really frustrated when looking for archives and, and any historical records. And, and, I, and when I would get frustrated and couldn't find it, um, I kind of pin it on myself and be like, well, it's probably me. I'm not looking harder enough. I'm not doing this. I'm not putting in the work to do this. So um, I kind of reflected a lot of that frustration onto myself and, and who I am as a person in my character. Um, but I think I realized after I reflected on it and after I, I, I honestly, I reflected on it about a few days ago um, because I'm in a social psychology class. So kind of we're learning about a lot of our behaviors and how we reflect. And I think that us, especially as individualistic, individualistic like Western people, we tend to um, 
when something goes wrong, we tend to internally pin it to ourselves rather than look at the external situation. So rather understanding that there was a lot of African-American erasure, that there was a lot of misinformation about mental health, I kind of just pinned it on myself. And now I'm looking back at it and was like, no, there was actually a lot of issues, external issues that were going on that resulted into me not being able to look into these issues as quickly and as efficiently as I would want it to. So just on that, yeah, just make sure that you don't get frustrated and don't pin all that on yourself as well. Good advice, good advice. Great, great. My next question is, what was your favorite part of your internship? And was there a moment or a discovery that you'll take with you, um, Isabel? Uh, so my favorite part of the internship was uh, when I was working on the story map for William Grimes and I finally found his house address. Um, because wow. like I said earlier and kind of like what Christina just said, about like um, black erasure. He was the first um, black and en previously enslaved um, person to write his own narrative. And that was really big. Um, and he lived here in Connecticut. Um, so just like being a part of um, that history was really big, but like, because um, back then record keeping was spotty, but it was even more spotty for um, people of color. It was just really frustrating to try to find uh, certain um, facts or things that I could corroborate with his narrative. So when I finally found um, like his address, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like that's just so amazing. I'm so happy I found it. Um, and yeah. Awesome, great. How about you, Beth? Um, I, I think, Two things uh, were my favorite moments from um, the process of um, developing the field guide and the uh, tutorials through this uh, remembering War World War I project on Zooniverse. Um, the first thing was just getting to read the letters and the diaries and kind of having an understanding of where these, uh, these people were and what they were experiencing and um, you know, just hearing their hearing their lives in their letters to their families, and um, I think it was it was a window into that experience during World War One that you would otherwise never have been privy to. Um, and then the second one is just getting to see, you know, developing. We had things called workflows that would give you the ability. They were like paths for people to go through the path um, and classify or transcribe um, the documents or the photos or the postcards. And I think um, the first workflow I worked on was postcards. And um, I got to test, you know, there's a button to test the workflow um, to see how it, um, what the path is going to look like for the person, for the volunteers on the website, and um, just getting to see, going through the path and getting to see my work, you know, pressing the buttons and seeing things that I had helped develop. It was really exciting. So it's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I actually, um, I really thank you for letting me um, have it play a part in this. Um, this uh, meeting in the Zoom. Um, I unfortunately have preschoolers that are oh. they're currently on their way into my classroom. So I am um, I'm gonna say goodbye and thank okay. you. Thank you to Connecticut State Library and, and for Christine who uh, has been my guidance. And um, I hope that many students will come and do internships here as well. Great, well, thank you for being a part of, of today. And we look forward to working with you again in the future. Thank you. All right, great, take care. Uh, Gwen, would you like to share? Um, I think my favorite part was using and learning how to use Archiving America just because that has, I was basically, and what I was doing was just looking at a bunch of really old newspaper articles about the mental health or mental hygiene movement in Connecticut. And I enjoyed that the most just because it was really entertaining um, because people wrote some pretty weird stuff um about mental health yeah and it was just reading things i couldn't believe it had been published because it was just 
so wildly either scientifically inaccurate or just um, offensive. Um, yeah. And so it was just, it was, that was really interesting just to see how people used to talk about mental health and also see the connections from like in the 1800s up until how people still talk about mental health now. Um, and sometimes you would just have to, it was like, you have to laugh instead of cry because it was so sometimes disturbing. Um, but I really enjoyed that just because I was reading historical documents from that, sorry, there's a big truck going by. Um, so that was just, I really liked that because it was, I wasn't reading analyses of these newspaper articles. I was reading these historical newspaper articles. Great. Wow. Okay. Uh, Christina. I would say that my favorite part of the internship would be, um, well, those, I always got really happy when I could find more information on um, the topic that I was doing or whether, whether it be whatever project I was doing then or during that time. But I think that especially with Professor Jim, when I was specifically looking at his story, um, I really like, cause I'm a character, I like to read people's behaviors and characters. I'm kind of weird like that. Uh, so kind of getting an insight of who he was as a person was super interesting to me, even though, you know, it's been years and years and years since he was even living. Um, seeing certain trends of his behavior and how he acted towards people, uh, seeing the community that had been written about and how strong they were during that time, it kind of gave me a sense of who he was as a character and who he was as a person. Like, especially when uh, me and Christine were looking at um, uh, the census and we got to see how many people he took in during that time just to help out and, and to give people a living situation when moving from the South to the North. Um, it really says a lot about his character and who he was as a person. So um, just looking at those uh, historical records, you could really get a read on who they were and how they acted during that time, which was really cool to me. Awesome. Great, great. Now we're at our final question um, of the program. And um, the final question is, what was the difficult issue with your internship and how did you overcome it? Isabel? Uh, so I think my the most difficult thing I found during the internship was just like dealing with um, imposter syndrome. And that's more personal. Um, that's because like, you, like I said, like I'm an English major, so I didn't know, I didn't really know how to um, properly do research. So just like being like given the opportunity to work with the state library and the archives, it was like really exciting. But at one point I just doubted myself, like maybe am I the right person to be doing this work? Do they want somebody like more aligned um, with this kind of field? Um, but then like at the end of the day, um, you just have to ask yourself, or maybe I'm just talking to myself now, you just have to ask yourself, like, these thoughts and things that you're thinking, like, are they constructive? Are they helpful? Or are they just like bringing you down more? Because like, I was going through the program, and I was getting like, like, good job on the work you're doing and stuff like that. But like, I wasn't internalizing that because I was just scared that I wasn't the right person, or I wasn't in the right place. But just like thinking about like, um, just kind of thinking like, are those um, thoughts helpful? Like really helped, and yeah. Great, great. Marsha? Um, hi, yes. Um, I think letting go of perfectionism was difficult. Because <laughs> uh, you, you know, that, that need to get it right, to make sure you, Put in enough, but but not, you know, get yourself all overwhelmed. And, um, you know, I, I'd get hung up about, about, well, what order does this go in, or or does it belong in this category or that category, or, or um, you know, just kind of spinning my wheels sometimes. And, you know, again, that that's that's when you can ask for help. Um, but, um, yeah, that so it 
some and sometimes it's like well you just have to you know move forward and 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 make that decision and you know there's always the clause well at a different time we can look at it again but sometimes i think that biggest fear is that time might never come because there's so much more to do that you know is going to get buried buried but um you know you can't get hung up on too long on on that perfectionism and and just just do the best you can and you know when you finish the job and you see all that work you've put into and, and done um you know one, one thing i'd like to say too is i think you kind of become an expert in the field that you're, you're working with between you know the, the research that you look up and you know i, I didn't know um that much about the Forest and Park Association, and they, I think the date was back to 1883, mm -hmm. um, and then seeing some of the first images and, and you know, the, the history of Connecticut was like, wow, I didn't know they went through all this, mm -hmm. and I think it was, you know, not be afraid to do more research, and, you know, that, that kind of I said, well, I shouldn't be sitting here at the computer, you know, look, you know, looking up this stuff. I should be there, you know, going, going, going. But um, sometimes you need to, especially with, you know, spellings or I, I couldn't read some things. And, and so I would, you know, like look up online. Oh, we have all these parks. OK, here it is. Here's, because some names were quite similar. And I wasn't quite getting it because I didn't know. So I said, well, look up the list of state parks. And I'm like, oh, OK, I can do that. And, and it helps. So you know, it's not just about shuffling a lot of papers around, um, you know, getting to be that expert in the field. Um, and I, I think Connecticut became like 80% deforested. Talk about a global warming crisis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and so uh, I learned about that and I saw pictures of just hills with just stumps, stumps everywhere um, was really scary. And I mean, today we have a lot of second and third growth, but it's why you don't see a lot of these, you know, humongous trees is because everything was deforested, you know, for housing and farms and, you know, it had its reason, but I, I think we've gone forward and learned from some of our mistakes too. Hopefully not all, <laughs> we're still there in a crisis. But uh, yeah, there's um, there's gonna be some difficult times. And But I think uh, like Isabella said, um, you, you know, that feeling of not being good enough because I, you know, I, I wasn't going fast enough, I'll never get it done. But again, that perfectionism comes in, it's like, you know, I should have been done with it you know, already. And here I am now putting this over there. And, yeah. but, you know, you, you have to let some of that go and keep moving. Wow. Yeah. And, and it got done. I don't know how it got done. <laughs> wow. That's good advice. Very good advice. Okay. Um, Gwen? Um, I would say when, like, whenever I was doing research and like hitting a brick wall, and not knowing exactly where to go from here, because either I just, it seems like all information has just ceased to exist, um, or I didn't know exactly how to maneuver around something. And then, but the way I got around that is by asking for help um, from the librarians I was working with, which is was basically the best thing to do because they always be like, oh yeah, no, X, Y, Z, there you go, you're fine. Um, and I would be able to, get around the, whatever problem I was facing. But yeah, I think that was probably, it is. it can be incredibly frustrating when you're researching stuff and then suddenly the information just isn't there. And, um, but yeah, yeah, ask for help definitely um, fix that issue. Great, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> and Christina. Yeah, just to echo, I guess what everyone else said, I think what my difficult Point when doing research is the erasure that you'll find, especially when you enter certain, um, when you're res researching certain people or certain topics, there's not, there's not always going to be the information you think or record keeping that you think that is going to be there initially. And so I think that's where uh, a lot of my 
frustration and difficultness came from, especially with the topics and people we were handling. Um, and overcoming it, I don't think you could overcome it. You can't over overcome something that was done in the past, right? So like, if there was a razor done then, it's like, it is what it is. The only thing I took from it was to acknowledge, yes, there was a great amount of erasure. And I kind of took in facts of like, what if, like, what if this person was from a different demographic group or uh, what if this was normalized back then, then the record keeping would be different. And I kind of took that into how I do work now. So when I do work with people, I take in their story in full rather than just in half. And I think that was used a lot in, um, in record keeping in the past, especially if you were part of certain demographic groups or uh, so forth. So I think I took my difficulties from this project and projected it how I would use it in the future, which would be to be very inclusive and to hear out people's stories. And if I ever do uh, come to terms with doing research uh, in a historical tense, I do want it to show the full story and not to kind of be the same as it was back then and have only half. Um, but yeah, I took it as something that I will um, continue on into the future. Excellent. Excellent. This has been valuable information that you all have shared. And I hope, um, I hope everyone has taken something from all of the things that you shared with us today. Um, I'm going to now I think it's the time to have Christine and Alan and if Lizette is with us to to come and share from their perspective working with you all. and. Um, with the program. So it's Christine and Alan and Lizette, are you all available to go live? Yeah, I guess I could start out. Um, so it, uh, it it's always interesting to work with, with uh, interns and volunteers and to um, find projects that all of them all, excuse me, projects that the student or intern or volunteer are interested in, we definitely try to do that. Um, and, you know, currently we're working on a National Historical Publications and Records Commission grant for uncovering New Haven County court records. So we've got a lot of work to do there in a short amount of time. Um, and then, so if you haven't checked that project out, you've probably seen a lot of, uh, or uh, check it out, definitely check it out. Um, there's also been social media posts. There's a subject guide up online that's being added to um, and blog postings. Um, but we also have other um, opportunities and, and projects. So I always like to work with, with the intern volunteer to kind of find something that works for both of us, moves, moves things forward and makes our resources available to the public. Great. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> I guess I'll go. I'm Christine Pitsley, Special Projects Director, um, and I love bringing on interns because I, I love to watch the progression from the beginning of the semester till the end, uh, just to see how far they've come and all that they've learned. Um, I tend to run my internships in a way that I want to provide uh, an experience and teach skills that are going to help students in their academic and career goals. So, uh, you know, I've done all sorts of uh, both in-person, very kind of traditional internships and, you know, had a lot of fun this summer doing uh, totally remote digital internships, working on digital humanities projects. So we have a ton of opportunities coming. We have just started on a project with History Pin and the National Park Service's Washington Rochambeau National Revolutionary Route. Um, so there's lots of both in-person kind of digitization type uh, work as well as digital humanities work. Uh, the Zooniverse project is gonna be continuing. Um, so you know, if you're interested in an internship, um, doing any sort of digital humanities projects, uh, we'd love to have you get in touch. And I'm going to pass it on to Anna. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Anna Newman, and I am one of the co-directors of the Connecticut Digital Newspaper Project. Uh, we were fortunate enough to work with Gwen, Isabel, and Christina over the summer, which was actually our first internship experience um, for the project. And um, we're just really grateful for all of their hard work and dedication over the summer, creating new resources um, for researchers. 
Um, so we are definitely interested in working with more interns in the future. Um, this would be kind of more towards the spring semester timeline early next year. Um, in sort of in a very general sense, this will likely involve um, creating new topic guides on underrepresented topics, um, creating content for social media, and then any other projects that might involve outreach and public engagement with the historic Connecticut newspapers that we digitize for our project. Um, so things like videos, exhibits, lesson plans, um, really whatever is kind of of interest to the people who are interested in becoming interns. So this would be um, a really great fit for anyone who's interested in historical research and historic newspapers, social media outreach, creating instructional content, or even digital humanities work as well. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out if that's of interest to you. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Christine, I don't know if you had anyone else you wanted to, to speak or come forward. Um, but I think everyone is, has has spoken, I believe. I have a question. Sure. On the internships that you've announced or um, past and future, um, do you have certain qualifications, um, you know, such as being a student or something like that um, for these internships? Um, I think Christine would probably be best to answer that question. Christine, can you hear me? Yeah, um, so typically internships are for students, either undergrad or graduate. Um, most of the time it is for a credit course. So we work with you know, faculty in whatever department a student is coming from. Um, we have not formalized any procedures within the state library for a formal internship program, but that's something we are working on. Um, you know, so we generally go by whatever the academic department's uh, guidelines are for an internship. Uh, volunteer positions are a little bit different, um, and, and we do take those on occasionally, um, and there would be no academic requirements for those. Uh, but, you know, within the internships I've run, I've had history students, I've had anthropology students, I've had art students, I've had library students, um, English psychology students. Um, you know, there's the list is is immense of the students that we can take on if you have an interest in the work. Um, Alan or Anna may have uh, any may have something to add to that. I, I think you've captured it pretty well, Christine. So yeah, interns are typically unpaid interns are typically students in a, in a college program and then we do take on volunteers and they it can be from anybody from having interest so we had a volunteer many years ago who was very much interested in in railroad history and we had railroad records that needed to be processed so they volunteered their time and and made it through it you know it took a while but we got through it and um that that's that those records are used so um but yeah i think you captured the the qualifications pretty well Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, great. Um, Does I, anyone I, else have questions yeah. for any of us? Who did the uh, Mansfield project uh, school or, or somebody mentioned that they did something like that about Mansfield in Connecticut? Was it yeah, so um, Christina and I worked together on the Mansfield project for um, Anna Newman's project for the Connecticut um, library, um, digital library newspaper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions? Comments? Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for, for, for being a part of this program. This is valuable information that you shared. And, and again, we look forward to working with you in the future on different projects. And again, thank you for your contributions that you made uh, to the State Library. And we look forward to future contributions. So with that, I think we're ready to close out the program. And um,
Christine, did you want to say anything? No? Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. And uh, we appreciate you uh, being a part of the, today's program. And uh, take care, everyone. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.